there's a knot called the trigutra, which is a three cornered knot. And I've been playing with this shape a fair bit recently. And I thought I'd show you how I've been making it, expanding it and playing with it. So I'm starting with a line because I basically want an equilateral triangle to start with. So I'm going to put the point of my compass somewhere on the line and I can make a little arc like that. Move the point of the compass over to where it meets the arc and create my little kind of vase shape. And the three points here are equidistant from one another. Then to make the triquetra, triquetra, I'm going to have difficulty saying that word over and over again. <laughs> I just extend the arcs until they meet like this. And then for the third one, I put the point of the compass in at the bottom of the shape and join them together. So that's the basics. And then to make this into a knot where you can overlap the segments, you either make your compasses a bit smaller or a bit bigger. I'm going to make them a bit smaller. You put the point in at the same three points and you draw three smaller or bigger arcs like this. There we go. And then to make this into a knot, I'll just take a little bit of a razor and erase one junction. Put that line back in, going one way. That one's going over. This one wants to go over this way. Like that. And then this one wants to go this way. So when you raise the junction, it doesn't matter which one you put going over or under as long when you start, as long as then you kind of follow that through with the rest of them. So now when I can go over this in pen, that one goes over and then I'll leave a gap where it's going to go under the next one. over there and under here. Oh, I'm not doing this very neatly. Okay, that's the basic shape. And these knots can be any size. So here I've made one larger and one smaller knot and then kind of linked them together. Uh, but I'm just doing that by, I've found the, uh, the points, my three equilateral triangle points. And then I've just changed the size of the compasses and drawn different size arcs from those points to make the larger or smaller knots. I was investigating this shape and I came across a really good video by David Nichols that showed you how to link six of these shapes together. Um, and that's what I used to create this piece here. And just did some little bits of decoration in between the shapes. And I'll show you the method that, um, that I've been using to develop this and kind of spin it outwards and make even more linked shapes together. And in this one, all the shapes in the center are circles. And then round the outside, you get that kind of that triple knot uh, in a, a loop. So to start with, I'm going to show you how to do one loop of rings, and then I'll show you how to expand it and get more of them. I'm going to start with finding the center of the page. And 
making a little mark there. I just like things to be neat and tidy. Okay, I'm going to start with making a pattern uh, that's called the Seed of Life, which is a circle and then you draw six circles around it. This is going to be a little bit of a shortcut for getting my equilateral triangles because I'm going to need quite a few of them. So because I like things neat and tidy, I like to measure how far it is from the edge of the page and then use that to make a mark at the top of the circle just so that everything's straight on the page. And then I make six circles starting with that as the first starting point and making sure that everyone goes through the centre of the circle. So for my second circle, I put my compasses on the, uh, the crossover point and make sure it goes back through the, the first mark I made and the centre of the circle. And I can keep on going round like that. I actually like to go round the other way and get them to meet in the middle because I think if you introduce an error here, it gets magnified as you go round. So doing on both sides, I think, reduces the chance of that happening a little bit. There we go. So now I've got my one point in the middle. I've got six points around the outside. And then I'm also going to need these ones here. I'm going to need some marks in there. And the easiest way I've found to make a mark is just to use the point of the compass and make a little hole. I don't need to draw anything. I just want to mark where those corners are. Making the little hole in the paper means that I can now take the eraser and erase everything I've done so far because all I need are the little holes. That's because if I leave these circles on here, which I did the first time I drew it, then I'll, ju I'll just get confused. I'm going to put lots more circles on here and they're going to be in different places to these ones. So if I leave these ones, I'll be confused. So I'm going to go over it and erase all of the lines that I've just put in. So I want to draw slightly smaller circles and the way to find out the, the maximum width that I can make is to draw a line between two of my points, like this. Place my compasses at an adjacent point and you'll see it's just slightly wider. So I can squeeze that down until it's touching the line and I can draw an arc that doesn't cross the line. If I can draw an arc that doesn't cross the line, I should be able to draw circles that will just touch, or there might be slight gaps between them, but that's okay. But you don't want them overlapping. And I'm going to draw circles all around this central point. I don't need to draw one in the centre. So there I've got six circles and they're not overlapping where they cross. And then I want to go to my outside points that I made with the point of the compass and just add in some extra arcs around the outside. like that. And that's what I need for this shape. All I'm going to do now is choose the width for the, uh, the width of the ribbon that's going to weave through everything. And you can just pick something. Um, 
I don't want it to be too thick because oh, I want a nice kind of gap in the middle of my little circles. And then I go around with this new size and make the same lot of circles all over again. So then if you remember when we did this shape, I picked an intersection and decided this strand was going over this one and then the rest just followed logically from there. That's exactly what I'm doing with this. Um, I'm going to start in the centre and uh, I find it easiest, I've got one of these putty erasers and I find it easiest to tear a little bit off and just use the tip of it but you could use the point of a, a regular eraser and that allows me to get into the detailed spaces and I've picked that one that's going over so then this one is going under, that one's going over, this one's going under and if I erase too much I can go back in with the pencil and make sure, oh that was the wrong bit so that goes over there, this one goes over here this one goes over that way that one goes over there and this one goes over here and I like to do that with the eraser first before I go in with the pen because otherwise I just get myself really confused. So now I can take these shapes one at a time. This strand is going over so then this one needs to form a little bridge there. So that's going over so this goes under. Yeah, that goes under there That so that it goes over this one and then we get to a corner and the corner, I want it to loop right round and go in again. So I'm erasing these two lines there where they cross. And then, so that goes under and then over and then it loops back round. So I've done one shape, I'll go round to complete this and then uh, fill it in with pen. So there are the six linked knots. To expand this pattern into this one we need to essentially kind of have this as the centre circle and then put six circles around it. So on here this would be the same as this pattern and then there's the same thing kind of again here, 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 here and here. And you can see the six dots in the centre here are the kind of the centres of these looped uh, triketra knots. So that's what we need to build the framework for now and this is where it gets a little bit complicated but essentially it's kind of doing this but like six times over. So this all fits on one page. Let's make our compasses about two centimetres. So the circles will be four centimetres in diameter. So I've done my circle the seven circles around that, uh, a ring of circles around that, a hexagon of circles around that and then I'm going to go and do that all again. So just go around again, do one more loop, adding circles.
and then again I'm going to go around and mark all of the intersections on the edge with the point of my compasses too. And then what I'm going to do this time is around the inside I'm just going to put a little pen point where my intersections are so that when we rub all this out I can see them a little bit better. Now some of these little dots are going to be kind of outside the um, the design. So I'd only do this if you're planning to kind of cover them over with something or if you're doing it as a sketch or just to kind of work out the pattern. And then I want to make an extra big mark on the ones that are going to be like the centres of those circly bits. So I'll start with the centre and then move diagonally kind of one, two, one, two, there we go, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So you can see these ones are a little bit bigger and these ones in the centre of the edges would be the same if we expanded the pattern that way as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make those ones a little bit bigger as well. So they're kind of two away from those. And these ones as well, but we're not going to go that far. So the reason I'm marking these is just for you, for your benefit, to try and make it a little bit easier because I'm going to be doing the smaller circles in the same way that I did with the, uh, with the other pattern. But where I've got a big spot like this, I want to skip it because I don't need that circle. And now having marked them all, I'm going to remove the pencil. Now every small dot that I've got, I want to do my slightly smaller circle. So again, I'm going to draw a little line and work out how big I need that circle to be. There we go. Ah, but I don't need to do the centre one. So let's start here and try and find the little hole in the paper. There's my six initial little circles. And then I'll do six around the outside. But remember to skip the big dots. And this next loop, we do all of the circles. And then finally, we do two dots on each side of the hexagon. So not right on the edge, not in the middle. And we don't need to do the whole circle there, we can just do like a half circle. So two on that side, two on this side. There may be a simpler way of doing this, it's very probable, uh, but what I like to do is I like to kind of take a pattern and mess with it and see what I can do and this is what I came up with and this is the method that I found that worked for me. Um, I hope it's going to work for you too, but if you're looking at that and going well that's ridiculously complicated, surely there's an easier way, you're probably right, there probably is. Please do share um, simpler solutions in the description. Um, I'm going to go around and add the second smaller circle to each of these now.
Now, it's exactly as I did with the other one. I'm going to start in the centre, take my little bit of a razor and start erasing some of the junctions. Starting at one and then kind of working around logically. And for this particular design, I find it easier to start in the centre and work outwards. So I raise, and I always end up erasing too much. So if I do erase too much, I just take my pencil and draw it back in. So that when I come to use the pen and draw it in an ink, I'm really sure about which bits I need to, which are the lines I need to keep. What you'll find as you follow this through is that the the pattern in the centre becomes little circles that just join back up and they become interlinked rings and then around the outside the pattern that you end up with is the um, is the triquetra knot kind of interlinked and it just happens logic if you follow the steps and you've left out these circles here and if you've left out these circles on the edge then you should find that you kind of can make your way to the edge um, and logically just by going junction by junction going okay this one goes over so then it needs to go under and then that goes over and that needs to go under and you can just work your way out to the edge just take it one step at a time and if you need to you can trace back to the center and out again Once you get to the outer edge, if you think about the the line of the hexagon, you've got uh, three kind of triquetra knots there. One is kind of coming down this way. It's kind of it's pointing outwards, and then there's two like pointing inwards here. So, um, just to say, in the middle of the in the middle of the side, next to this big dot that I put here, instead of overlapping your strands, you kind of turn them back on themselves. So the strand is coming through here and heading back. Here, the strand's coming down here and I want it to loop back around and back around again. So I'm going to go through each of these and make sure they're all uh, looping and weaving the right way. So there we go. Um, it's a good idea at this stage to kind of go through and check um, that all of the unders and overs are in the right kind of direction and that you can see kind of clearly each junction which way you go. You really want to be clear at this stage uh, and not make any mistakes a bit later on. So it's best to find them now before you start putting pen on things. And another fail safe for getting the pattern right is that I find that um, because it's got this kind of rotational symmetry I find that if I start from the centre and I make the same mark six times, then I'm more likely to notice if one of them is off. So I'm going to turn my page just to give my hand the best angle to work at. And I'm going to keep filling in my lines all the way to the edge.
as you can see here I've still got these little dark dots in between all of my kind of weaving and to hide all of that I'm just going to go and colour in those bits. So thanks very much for watching. I really hope that you found this helpful. If you do use any of the patterns that I've done today in any artwork, I'd really be interested to see. I'm just curious, like to see what people do with things. The account that I'm using to share all of my fine liner art and my screen print work and, and that kind of thing is uh, Lou Davis Art on Instagram. Um, so yeah, so find me over there and uh, share what you've been working on. I've got some ideas for things to do with this kind of pattern involving making more screen prints. Um, hopefully I'll be able to document that in the next few weeks, but I've got some other ideas for videos coming up soon too, and I hope that you're going to enjoy them. So thanks very much for watching today, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.